Hi there and welcome to another video. This video is part two of our Raspberry Pi Open Media Vault media streaming solution. In the previous video we installed Open Media Vault along with Docker and Portana to manage those Dockers. So the first thing we'll do is access the Portana front end, the web GUI. To do that, click on System, OMV Extras, Portana, and then select Open Web. Or you can just navigate to the IP address of your Raspberry Pi, followed by a colon 9000. If this is the first time you've logged into Portana, you'll have to enter a admin password. And then click create user. We'll click on get started and select local. I'm going to go into environments and again click local and for the public IP I'm going to enter the IP address of our Raspberry Pi and then click update environment. So the first Docker I'm going to install is going to be Plex. To do that, I'm going to click on Stacks and select Add Stack. Give it a name, call it Plex. And I'm going to paste in our configs. The first thing we need to do is create three new shares on the Open Media Vault install. So if we click back over to Open Media Vault, and we'll click on Storage and Shared Folders. We'll create a shared folder. The first one is Config. We'll select our local disk and we'll give everyone permission to read write. Select Save. I'm going to create another shared folder. Call it TV. Again, select our local drive and again give everyone read write. Hit save. And we'll also create one called films. Again, the local drive. Everyone read write. Hit save. I'm going to confirm our pending changes. Once those changes have taken effect, I'm going to go into Services and SMB Shares. Click Create. And I'm going to select each of our shares and add them into here. Once done, apply those changes. Once that's complete, we'll go back into storage and shared folders because we will need these sections here for our Plex Docker configs. Here we have path the library for the config TV and movies which I'll find in the absolute path here. So I'm going to copy to clipboard, the one for config, go back over to Portainer, and I'm going to replace the path to section with the absolute path for those shares. So the next one I'll do is TV, copy that, back to Portainer, Remove the path to and paste in the absolute path. Remember to leave the colon in between your absolute path and the share name. We'll do the same with films. Well, I've called it films. It's called movies in here. Once done, 
you can just deploy the stack. After a few minutes, the stack should have deployed successfully. And then if we go into containers, we'll see that Plex is available and running. If we open up another browser tab and go to the IP address of our Raspberry Pi, followed by the port 32400 forward slash web, which will take us into Plex and where we can either set up an account or log in with an existing account. Once you've signed in with your email address, select got it. We're not going to select a Plex pass at the moment. Here you can set a name for your Plex server. Now I'm going to unselect accessing the media from external sources and hit next. I'm now going to add a library. select films, we'll select the folder and then browse and here we can select movies and add and add library. I'll add a second library which will be TV shows. Again select add folders and browse and select TV. So these relate to the folders that we set up in the original config for Plex. Hit next when you're finished and done. Next we need to add some content to our shares so that Plex has media to import. We'll go back to our Open Media Vault GUI and we shall go into services and SMB shifts, easy for me to say. We'll go into settings and we need to enable this service and select save and apply changes. Once that's completed, we can then access the shares on the Raspberry Pi. We'll access those shares if you open up Windows Explorer and type in backslash backslash in the IP address of your Raspberry Pi. Hit enter. There you'll see your shares ready to take content for your media server. If you find you're unable to access the network share, it gives you an access denied message. I would suggest if you go into users and then users, select your PyNASPlex user or whichever user you specified, edit the user and type in your password again and hit save. And then apply the changes again. And once those changes have applied, try accessing the share again. Hopefully you'll have more luck then. And once you've added your media into your shares, Plex should then quickly update with your selection of movies and TV shows. If it doesn't, click next to each of your folders and just hit the scan library files to import any new media. The next thing we're going to do is add DLNA to our little streaming service. What we'll do is go into system and into plugins 
And if you go to the search, just type in mini, and you'll find that there's an Open Media Vault mini DLNA plugin. We'll select that plugin and choose install. Tick the confirm box and say yes. Once the installation is finished, select close. And now go into services, where you'll have a mini DLNA option. We'll go into there and select settings. We'll enable the service. Hit save. And apply changes. Once completed, we'll select Shares. We'll click on the plus to create. And we'll select our Films folder. Now you can select which media you want, video, images, audio, or just select All. I'm going to leave it on All and hit Save. And I'm also going to add TV, Save and then apply changes. Now I'm also going to add a music share. So I'll go into storage and shared folders. Click the plus, call it music. And the file system is our local hard drive. Users, everyone, and save. and apply changes. I'm then going to go into services, SMB SIF, yeah, SIFs, and shares. I'm going to click the plus again to create a new one. And I'll select music, hit save, and apply changes. Once that's done, I'm going to go back into the mini DLNA service and into shares. And I'm going to add the music share. Only this time, I'll just select audio and hit save. And apply. Another interesting option that's available through the plugins is a YouTube downloader. So we're going to System and Plugins again. And in the search box, just type in YouTube, select the plugin, and then select Install. Select Confirm and Yes to proceed. Once that's finished, select Close, and then go into Services, and a new option is available then called Downloader. Now, we can select Add Download, give it a download type, we'll select YouTube, we'll give it a file name, we'll just call it 1.mp4, and the format, we'll select MP4. For the URL, I'm going to select one of my own videos, right click on the video, select copy link address, and paste that into the URL box. Select a folder to download to, 
In my case, I'll select the TV share. Select Add. And once added, highlight the video or highlight the option and then select Start Download. You'll see a tick appear under Downloading. And then when the tick disappears, you'll have a file size. So now we can go to our network shares and into TV. And there we have our YouTube video downloaded to our NAS share. Next, we're going to install our music streaming application. This will be a Docker application again, but we'll also need some new shares in order to accommodate that application. So if we go to storage, shared folders, create, and we'll create podcasts, select our drive, change our permissions, hit save, and we'll also create another one called playlists, and one final one called Air Sonic config, I'll spell it right, select the drive, change permissions, hit save, I'm also going to create SMB shares, for each of these, Once that's done, apply the config. And once that's finished, we can go over to Portainer and then into Stacks and select Add Stack. And we'll add Air Sonic. We'll paste in the config. Now we do need to get the IDs for our user in Open Media Vault. If you SSH to your Raspberry Pi and then type in ID space dollar user, we'll get our user IDs and we can put, put those into our config. Again, you'll need to get the absolute path for each of your shares. So if you go to storage, shared folders, you'll see the absolute path. If you copy that path and paste it into each of your shares and then deploy the stack. We can then go to containers and we can modify we can monitor the logs. Once you see this line here where the application has started, we can then navigate to the IP address of our Raspberry Pi with a colon at 4040. Default login is admin and the password is admin. And here you 
you can see it has picked up our music. The next thing we're going to install is PyHole. To start the installation, we need a little bit of information. If we SSH to the Raspberry Pi and then type in ifconfig, what we want is the interface name. In my case, it's eth0. With that information, we can paste in a command, which I will put into the description, essentially using eth0 for the subnet and the gateway or your router IP address, and then the IP address that you want to use for the pie hole and the network name. So that then creates our new network. We can then go back to our Portana instance. And from here, we select volumes, add volume, and we want to add two volumes, etc pie hole, and select add volume again. And we'll use etc dnsmask.d and create volume again. We then want to go into containers, and we shall add a container, and we'll call it pie hole. And the image we want to pull down from Dogger Hub is piehole forward slash piehole colon latest. We then want to publish five new network ports. And these will be 53, 67, 80, 443, and 53 again. However, the top two of 53 and 67 want to be TCP. Then the bottom three all want to be UDP. We then want to click on volumes and we'll map two additional volumes. The first being forward slash ETC forward slash pie hole and we'll select etc pie hole from the drop down and then the second one is etc slash dns mask dot d and again from the drop down we'll select our volume Next, we'll go to the network section and from the drop down, we'll select the network that we created earlier. Then we'll go to env and we want to add two variables. The first one being web password. Make sure that's in uppercase. And the second being server IP. And select the IP address you want to use. Then we want to go to restart policy. And we'll change that to always. And lastly, we'll go to capabilities. And we want to turn on net admin. Once that's done, select deploy the container. Once the installation is finished, we can open up another tab and we can navigate to the IP address that we selected for pie hole and we can log in with the password that we set and there we go
Now that PyHole is running, you may want to change your network settings for your computer so that the DNS for your network connection runs through the PyHole server. And then start browsing. And you can keep an eye on the blocked queries while you go. So if we navigate to some sites, we will see the number of queries that get blocked, the total number that are requested. Now there is one handy utility that I use when I've got PyHole running. It allows me to bypass blocking via the PyHole. So if you go to a site that's an ad, it gets blocked because that's essentially what you want PyHole to do, but sometimes you may not. Now the extension is here. I will put a link in the description so you can find it easily. You simply add to your browser. This works for Chrome as well as Firefox. Now if we go to the settings for this plugin, click on the cog. You have to enter the PyHole address, which is the IP address of the PyHole, forward slash admin, and then we need the API key, which we get from PyHole itself. If you go to settings, and then the top tab, you have the API web interface, then show API token and confirm, copy that token, and then go back to the settings and paste. And then we can close out of PyHole once we have a successful connection. We'll pin the PyHole. And there you can see we have an on-off button, which turns it off for 10 seconds, which is the default. And then you can click on your ads without the links being blocked anymore. And the PyHole will turn itself back on again after the allotted time. You also have the option to block URLs or add URLs so that it doesn't automatically block or it does automatically block. It's just a handy little feature to have, I find. Thank you for watching this video. If you found it useful, please consider liking and subscribing, and hopefully we'll see you in the next one. Take care and bye for now.